Hello. I am Matt Matt, and I am joined by an amazing person known as Tom Forsyth who worked on this game back in the day. If you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm Tom Forsyth. Yeah, I was a programmer at uh, Mucky Foot on uh, this game, Blade 2, um, almost 20 years ago. Uh, I mainly did the graphics engine and I worked on most of the Xbox specifics and the Xbox is the version we're playing today. So um, all this horrific stuff that Matt's going to do to this game, yeah, it's my fault. It's entertaining, no, it's, though. It's, it's not Tom's fault. Um, yeah, this is Blade 2. It is uh, a game... <laughs> movie tying game which we all love those i mean i do I, I i love movie tying games but this one is special um this this game takes place after blade 2 and before blade trinity in the in the storyline um um yeah let's just let's just just get it started um there's a couple of things i want to mention um xbox version on console is the fastest that's why i'm playing it on today because i want to do it on hardware technically ps2 is faster for emulator um, the Xbox version has some other tricks we can do as well, but it's mainly faster because it just loads faster. So, um, time will start when I skip the first cutscene. So, since we're the new game plus, we don't do the training level. We just go straight into the game. Um, so I'll give you a countdown. Kharkov time. And we're just gonna go straight into it right off the bat. So, three, two, one. Go. All right, so straight away, I'm just going to turn around and I'm going to come over into this, uh, this corner and I'm going to get on top of this box and I'm just going to force myself into this box. If I fall down, and I'm just going to clip to the wall and I'm right about it straight away. He doesn't mess around this mm. lad. No. I'm just going to jump to the end of the level. <laughs> um, so get used to seeing a black screen a lot. Or any type of screen that's a different color, uh, because that's the way this other band works in this game. It's just kind of a void that we jump through. Because it's the Xbox so, version. Look at the lovely cape. Yeah. So the PS2 version doesn't have this coat that I'm wearing. Not enough yeah. processing power for it, but on this version we can use it. And, and it's pretty cool. That was Got the first level physics. done. Yeah, that was the first <laughs> level done straight away. And this one's even faster. If you if you blink, you'll you'll miss this level. Um, and I'm going to use a glitch straight away that I'm going to be using a lot throughout the run, which is a cool side jumping glitch. Where if we can land on the floor at a, uh, and trick the game into thinking we're going to land at a lower plane, we can just fall through the floor like that. I'm just going to jump forward and end in the elevator, and that's that level done. <laughs> Ding -ding. Always level in the game. Very quick. <laughs> When you actually play it, it's quite a long level, but um, yeah. It is. It's like, that, that level takes about two and a half minutes glitchless. This game is long glitchless. It's probably like a two-hour run. Yeah, it's a decent-sized decent game if you play it properly, but... Um, you so there's three chapters in this game. Um, we're still on the first one. Uh, I think each one has about five to six levels. And right now we're on the, the third level of the first chapter. Which, if anyone's played this game, it's unlikely. A lot of people not, don't know this game exists. But if you have, you might remember this level with the big dance floor. But again, I'm just going to skip over it all. This was one of the prettiest levels. We th This is the one that shows off all the, um, you know, the hordes. We really wanted to have you fighting like 20 people. Because that was the real focus on this game. We didn't want you fighting one or two at a time. We wanted you fighting everybody. And so that's yeah. that's what's good about this. But you go ahead and skip all that. <laughs> I'm going to do that side jumping glitch again. So the way that works, it's really hard to explain. But basically, you're doing a side jump and the game thinks, oh, you're going to land on this floor right here, which is the floor that's closest to you. And once the game has set that determined point, if you land at a point that is higher than that, you just clip through it. And we use that a lot to just go out of bounds really easily. It's, it seems really broken, and that's because it is. Um, fun fact, though, that does not work on the NTSC version of the Xbox version, only on PAL. 
Um, but it works on both NTSC and PAL on PS2. Yeah, so um, And now we're on M phase. We can't do any glitches in this level, unfortunately, because it's like a level tied to destroying these computers. So we have to like do this and then go back to the start. This jumping. Now we've lost the coat as well. Oh yeah, some some levels we didn't have enough uh, frame buffer budget for the for the coat, so we just turned it off. So he randomly, you know, loses the coat for no well explained reason, and it's just process time. <laughs> We're just like, eh, can't be asked to fix it. Doesn't matter. You just yeah. On the on in, in the final chapter, you only have it for the first level, and then you just lose it for the rest of it. Yep. We never. So if you why. didn't realize, I used this thing. It's called a UV grenade, and it basically takes out pretty much any. Um, enemy in the vicinity. That's why we play New Game Plus. It's literally just so we can get those at the start of the game because that speeds up sections a lot. Um, so right there, I didn't actually need to do that, but I'm playing it safe. One of the health pack, one of them drops one, so we just blow them all up. And then also, if you do that, it means that um, you won't take as much damage going through here either. Um, and there is a bug in this game. I probably should have mentioned it straight away. But there is a bug on the Xbox version specifically where if you die at the end in an end level transition, um, which can happen, the level ends fine, but you lose all game audio. You only get music. So if that happens, I'm going to have to restart my console, unfortunately, because um, it's going to be weird playing without sound for the for an entire marathon run. But that's an awesome. Oh, that's bug. all the computer destroyed now. Let's get back in the elevator. I'm sure you can. Thank me for that bug. <laughs> and this is one spot it can happen, but we should be fine now because we've got loads of health. The, the jumping, by the way, was, you know, it was a real pain because, yeah, the last, I don't know, three months of the game, you know, the testers had just come back and say, oh, we fell out the world again and kept, kept reporting these fallout world bugs and we'd have to fix them, or I didn't. Kharkov process. Um, and, uh, well, I guess we didn't fix them all. Because uh, you're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so right there, we cancel the UV grenade animation. So we can actually let it explode mid-air, which takes out pretty much everyone in that room. And then there's usually like one straggler behind us. So we just use the second grenade for. So it's, that line of dialogue is pretty funny because it's like, which was like, that door ain't open till you're finished it. Door open. Just, I just find it amusing that we do it that fast that the dialogue hasn't even finished yet. So again, as usual, I'm just going to go and flip out of bounds and go to the end of the level. This level is the first hard level in the game, and it's quite long as well, but we're just going to come over here, do our popular side jumping to clip into here. I'm just going to jump out of bounds until we get to the end part. Then I'm just going to destroy this... Uh, Thing, thing. I don't, don't know what it is. is. No, I don't either. <laughs> no, I don't remember the what thing. it is. Got to blow it up. Oh. There we go. That guy's just standing there. He's chilling. He's waiting for the cutscene to trigger, but we just never trigger it. And now, okay, this level. Ooh. This level has the hardest skip in the game. Um, it's very difficult to do. It is very somewhat is random. I could get it within five seconds or I could, it could take me two minutes. So I'm hoping that it plays nice with me. But first we've got to do some things. So we want to try and take out as many enemies as we can in this room. So another UV grenade. We basically want to clear all the enemies because we're going to have to come back this way with a canister, which while we're holding the canister, we can't do anything. We're kind of just like stuck. So I want to take out every enemy I can, so that's why I'm being, being a bit slow. Um, also, you can get stun locked in this game as well, if you get punched holding that dead canister, which I don't want to happen. He's got to get this poison canister and chuck it in the air vents to kill all the vampires, but while you're yeah. carrying the and canister, it's a, you're really slow and can't do anything. So. I thought there was an enemy behind me then. Yeah, so this level, you have to like go and turn off the power to unlock this door, but I don't want to unlock it, I'm just going to go through it. So I've got to line myself up here very precisely and put my gun away. I'm going to pause the game to buffer my jump. Okay, I didn't get it. So we're basically just going to side jump. And if we do it right, we can like land in the transition between the wall and the door. And it will just force us through the door for whatever reason. But it's very, very difficult to do. Not 
not playing nice. Of course not. People are watching. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot harder to do on the Xbox version. There we go. There you go. Third try, not bad. Straight through. That's all right. Three goes. So he's going to get the so canister. I think that's the last skip that was found. Yeah. And of course, you know, so he's got the canister. Just, I don't know why it's delivered by helicopter. Whatever. Um, and now you're going to ask, how's he going to get it back through the door? Because the door's still closed. And you can't jump while holding the canister. So what's he going to do? Well, it turns out no, just, we didn't check collision between the canister and the door. So you can just put the canister in the door. Yeah, this might seem really convoluted, but this does save about a minute and a half over doing the level the normal way. I'm um, also, oh yeah, so oh, you yeah, can actually yeah. trick, in yeah, this yeah. game, you can trick the game into letting you jump backwards while you're in a side jump. So all you do is just, um, you jump left or right, and then you just hold backwards and press jump again, and it just lets you turn, change direction midair for whatever reason. So now he's back on this side of the door. Was there an enemy behind me? No. Oh, the, wait, I think there is. Oh, and not. then the canister I think, is I think I'm in the door. Yeah, so we just pick it go. up through the door. Uh, and the, the reason bugs, this bugs, is bugs. very useful is because in this level, we used to have to build up the rage meter. So if you look at the little red bar at the bottom, it's very tiny. We'd have to fill that up to get the infinite infinite health section of it and we can also run really fast and we use that to basically just run with the canister to the end and if you turn the power off the normal way and get the canister the normal way there'll be loads of enemies in this room you just got to hope you can run past them um but since we do it this way there is none so we don't need to build up that 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 meter anymore which is random so this is random here there's these this enemy can like shoot you or hide he shot so i've got to shoot them but that's fine And I would just plop it in and we're done. And that is the end of chapter one. And that's done. And now we're on to chapter two, which is Layers of the Byron. I think it's called. And again, as uh, you might have gathered from everything else we'll be doing in this game, I'm just going to go show out of bounds. A couple of enemies here I want to deal with because they're annoying. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line ourselves up with this uh, newspaper stand. Turn. We're gonna back kick twice to tip through the wall, and then we're just gonna jump in a straight line here for about a minute and a half. So this is the perfect time to read a bunch of donations if you've got any. I am so glad you said that because we have all kinds of donations coming in right now. Little squirrels and in fifteen dollars says cute kittens. My cat demands cute kittens. Thank you so much. Sid sent in $10 that says, for cute kittens. M the Marvelous sends in $50 that says, cute kittens, support a great cause, sign me up. And Tree sent in $1,111 with the comment, kittens, less than three. Thank you so, so much, all of you, for your incredible generosity. I just want to give a little update on that uh, cute kitten overload incentive. We are now sitting at $9,766.29 out of the $10,000 that we need. We need less than $250 in donations. I believe y'all can do it. Let's go. So I think we're doing it there now. Um... It takes a while. It, we're basically just going from the start of the level to the end of the level, and then the end. The level is like one long, massive train tunnel thing, and this is the end. So we're just yeah. going to jump back in bounds and trigger the end of the level. This is like a portal system, yeah. trying to figure out you know what's visible and what it should render. But of course, it has no idea where you are because you, you shouldn't be there. So it gets all confused and draws random stuff. <laughs> Yeah, now we're on the worst level in the game. Tom, would you like to explain why this level City exists, sewers. please, and what it is? Uh, this is an, well, it's a sort of escort mission. This is ropey old Whistler. I'll hop along, and he's going to plant some bombs, and you have to protect his life. And yeah, it's, everybody it like nine minutes. hates these missions. Now, the good thing is Whistler can usually look after himself. you just got to wander around it. So, you know, it's not a particularly difficult one, but it just takes ages and it annoys speedrunners like that, Matt. Yeah. 
And the Xbox version is a lot worse because these zombie vampires right here. On the PS2 version, they will die in four bullets. On the on the Xbox version, it takes ten to kill them. So I have to use the sniping mode to take them out. Which means in some of the sections where they exist, it's a lot harder to kill them. So I have to just leave them. Because I don't want it I don't want Whistler to get stuck. Oh my god, I can't do it. Okay, there we go. What? Die please? Oh my god. You have to shoot it when it goes green for some reason. I apparently can't do that. Oh, he's really close. That's not good. So yeah, we do have to take a little bit of time loss leaving some of those zombies alive because Whistler will get um He'll get slowed down by the the smoke that they emit. But they won't actually attack him. So it's like kind of like a compromise, I guess. But on the PS2, you can just kill them. But on this, it just takes too long and it wastes too much ammo. And we need a lot of ammo in this level. So Now, the smart among you will be asking, why does it take more bullets on the Xbox version rather than the PS2 version? And as the Xbox program, I can tell you, I have no idea. They should be the same. Yeah. I did not change a single line of gameplay code on this. It's the same damn code. And yet, you know, here's Matt Matt going like, oh, why does it do this on the Xbox version and not the PS2 version? I'm like, I have no idea. I didn't touch that code. I don't know where that code is. It's the same code, I promise. So there's all these, all these weird little differences between the versions, and I have no explanation. It's very, very weird. Thankfully, it's only an issue on this uh, specific level. Um, you can just ignore them on the other ones. It's not a big deal. So, I don't want to be too slow trying to kill them, so that's why I'm just like... Just doing it. I'm just going to leave them, because if I'm too, if Whistler's too close to me behind me, he's going to get stuck on me, Can't and that'll slow him down. Actually, I could, maybe. No, he's grabbed me! No, oh, he just wants a cuddle. <laughs> Look at my health. Oh, no. Tom, what have sorry, you done? Sorry, that was terrible advice. In the middle of the run. I got... Okay, uh, that's going to have stopped Whistler, but I don't care. But yeah, you need to watch where you're using those grenades, because Whistler can just stop moving. You get stunned by it, but I, I'm not risking it. <laughs> Thankfully, there's a health kit right here, so I should be fine. The thing is that the focus of this game was meant to be, yeah, this hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? And we really wanted this feeling of fighting, like, eight vampires at once and, and sort of stole the idea from, like, Robotron. Like, Robotron, but with fists instead of bullets. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a much more sort of, you know, fun punch em up But obviously, you know, that all takes time, so Matt Matt's not doing any of that stuff. He's just shooting things. Yeah. I don't think there is a point where I actually have to fight people that way, but... Yeah, the boss fight. It is, it is good. A lot of people get confused about how it works. Like, they'll just mash the stick a bunch to try and fight, but you have to do, like time it in a rhythm. Yeah, we, we wanted to make sure it was, like, not, you know, one-on-one -on -one sort of typical fighting game. We wanted to make sure you... You know, you really felt like you were fighting, like, you can fight up to eight people and, and they sort of queue up, right, they're, if there's more vampires and they, they properly take their turn and, you know, they're very polite with each other. It's like, no, no, you first, you know, so only, uh, only eight of them fight you at a time, but it's, uh... We actually had, we had this smart AI where, like, if they were low on health, they'd go and find a friend. And this sounds really cool, right? You know, you're beating some people up and one of them gets unhealthy and he runs off and gets some mates and you meant to stop him. But what actually happened was you wouldn't notice he'd run off. So he'd run off, he'd get his, some of his mates from elsewhere in the level, bring them on. And, and you go, oh, more bloody vampires. And you sit there and you'd fight them. And then, um, and then one of them would get low health and run off and you'd still be fighting some others. And you'd sit there for like 20 minutes just beating people up. And then eventually, you'd run out of vampires to beat up, and you'd run through the level, and the, you've literally killed everyone. So you walk in the first room of the first level, fight for 20 minutes, and then you've killed everyone in the level. So we're like, oh. So yeah, t turn that AI off. <laughs> you don't want smart AI, you want fun AI. 
I wouldn't call fun just surrounding you and beating you up. Yeah, it turns out that's. And they can they fun. can still run up as well. They just, they do yeah. Some, it, sometime and on they go and hide or something and it's, it's just, just yeah it's just it's a pain. Really. I'm not liking my health at all. It's this I think this is the most I've ever lost health doing this level ever in the entire time I've played this game. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. But you can see Whistler's going kind of slow mm. when he's in that smoke. But yeah. like. There's nothing I can really do about it on the Xbox version. On PS2, it's fine. Just... PS2, you just mow them all down. Yeah. Yeah, why is that different? So weird. So we're nearly at the end of this level. It is the most boring level. It but is, it is it's definitely the only the boring level in the game, so... Well, if it's super yeah. boring, I would like to butt in and say we met that cute kitten overload incentive. Thank you so much, all of you, for your generosity. We're going to be seeing the kitties. Yeah, all those little two dudes hiding. Yeah, there's just no way to speed Whistler up, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's why this one's so. I've tried to toy with ways to. to speed yeah, I know, level, I know. You've looked at a lot, but no. It, it's on another level if you can, like, because it, basically what happens in this level is you you take Whistler around in a in a circle and just come back to the start, and the end level trigger is where the level actually starts, and you need Whistler to be there for it to trigger. I've tried glitching him out so he stays there, doesn't it doesn't trigger. He has to actually plant all the bombs first, it seems like, so. It's funny, I, I remember when we were playing this, because I'm not very good at this game, actually. I remember this this level being hard and like wishing Whistler would slow down because he's always just cruising into pro problems. I'm like, dude, I'm beating those guys up yet. But yeah, when you play it, it's like, oh, it's a bit dull, really. And that's it. So I'm just stand here and wait. But yeah, this is where we started and this is where it ends. Longest level in the game. Most boring level. But now it's over and I'm going to get back to the good yeah. stuff. You may be wondering so again, why this, the This level's going to start in the same place. We're just going to go out of bounds again, as usual. The sewers reminds me. Those are the best lit sewers ever. They're just Same beautifully sewers. lit, so you can see what's going on. One of the problems with doing a Blade game is like, Blade is very black, right? He's a very black dude wearing very black clothes, and he hangs around with vampires who, you know, don't hang around in daylight. And so the film looks really cool because it's basically black with like flashes of silver. But if you, it turns out if you do that in a game, you just can't see what's going on. So so we had to sort of brighten everything up a bit. So he's not really black, he's sort of grey. <laughs> and and these, you know, dark, gloomy sewers. Well, yeah, we sort of added quite a lot of disco lighting. Mm. Now you can actually see what well you're doing. Sewers. Very, very well lit sewers. Um, yeah. So this next level is kind of just, we run from point A to point B, it's pretty short. Um, so if you want to talk about the best story, and that's the the jumping tutorial, I, I'd love to hear that. Oh, yeah. So the, the jumping, I mean, the jumping was, like, it's really important that, that Blade is, you know, agile and stuff. You know, in the in the movies, he's, he's jumping around like crazy. So we had to do jumping, but the physics for jumping was such a pain, right? And that's why all these glitches exist. And it, it and, you know, Matt Matt's, doing clever stuff to really force them but they used to be really easy for a lot of the game's production and all the QA guys were like oh god it's another bug and I've fallen through the world fix it so they're you know they're just a constant pain and what we also had was we had a lot of jumping puzzles like you know a gap and you've got to jump over the gap and if you fail you fall down and you have to go back up again and, and, and like one by one we realised like this jumping puzzle just isn't fun or like it's too hard or yeah he's meant to jump over that but anyway um <laughs> uh, and and so we just sort of like the be you know like the the previous sewer level all those bridges mainly there was actually a gap between them so you had to jump from one side to another instead of just walking and they were just a real pain um they weren't fun you'd screw up the jump and um and they just annoy people so one by one we took them out and then like two weeks before 
big oh, yeah. vampire dinosaur following me. Yep. Like two weeks before the game was due to ship, we, we took a jumping puzzle out and someone said, well, hang on, how many jumping puzzles are there left in the game? And we're thinking like, I think we took them all out. And there's one left and it's in a tutorial where we teach you how to jump. It's the only jumping puzzle in the game is in the tutorial. And we're like, oh, can't be asked to just it's fine. Just ship the game. Ship the damn game. Gaunt Moore aside. I love that story. It's because I never noticed until he told me and I just did click and I was like, hang on a minute. Yeah. That is very true. It's amazing. Welcome. Welcome to game development. <laughs> So now we're in Blood Donors. For these switches, you're meant to actually like go up to them and turn them, but you can just shoot them and it also works. I'm assuming that's intended. I don't know why it wouldn't be. It's got an animation and everything. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm assuming it is. Yeah. Now I'm going to try and do a pretty hard out of bounds. On the Xbox version, this, this clip right here is very annoying to do. Because you, you have to be like in a certain spot and you have to be really quick with it. If you, you have to like time it really well. All you see in this run is just black, like most of the times, black everywhere. So I tell them the Wesley Snipes story. Oh, but yeah, okay. So this is Blade, right? In the films, Blade's played by Wesley Snipes. But for the game, we only had the right to use Blade. We did not have the rights to use Wesley Snipes' likeness, uh, except for the cover of the game. We could use that. But in, in the game, this guy in front of you, he cannot look like Wesley Snipes. He has to look like Blade, but he can't look like Wesley Snipes. So this drove the artists mad, right? So they've got to make a guy that looks like Blade, but doesn't look like Wesley Snipes, even though Wesley Snipes is the only guy that's played Blade. So they went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with the producers of the movie and stuff. And they'd go like, nah, it doesn't look enough like Blade. So they'd try again. No, nah, this looks too much like Wesley Snipes. It drove them absolutely nuts. It took months to get a, a, a guy that looks like Blade, but not like Wesley Snipes. I mean, the rights... Even though it, it does still slightly look like Wesley Snipes. No, no, officially, legally, it does not. Come on. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble <laughs> now. Jeez. After all these years, you get a lawsuit. Oh no! It's just, Several it, very the... important people agreed. Oh no! I got uh, a soft lock. Oh. If you jump on those stairs at the wrong spot, you can get stuck in between the plane of the stair and the floor. When I just want to clip through the floor. But yeah, movie tie-ins are just full of these really God, stupid rules of like. Oh, you can use that. Oh no, you can't use that. Oh, you're not allowed to use that, but we have to have something that's like that in the game, but not quite like it. Oh, I did it again. Oh, dude. It's fine. This one's going well enough that it, it, it's, it's, it's fine to get some hiccups. I was expecting some at some point God, anyway. More aside. This clip's actually fine. It's not too hard, but it can be annoying. And it's, it makes it's even more annoying when you're trying to do it with the vampires. Right? Yeah, I was standing in the wrong spot as well. <laughs> So, yeah, we go out of bounds. We're going to follow a specific right here. So on PS2, I usually, like, kind of eyeball this and just YOLO it. Um, but on Xbox, I can't do that. If I do that, there's a good chance of me soft-locking in between the level planes. So, even... So, on... It's hard to explain. Um, I need to make sure I don't jump back in bounds. Yeah, that would be very cool. Okay. I'm just going to run a straight line now. Um, so on PS2, where you see the flashing, Sometimes when you jump in between level planes, you'll never soft lock unless you like stand still. But on this version, there are certain spots where no matter what you do, if you go in that direction, you will just soft lock. So to avoid that, I have to take different routes like that. So usually I'd just jump straight to this final area, but there I, I couldn't do that. So I had to kind of just work my way around it. But that's one spot where it can happen. And there's one more spot later on. But it should be fine. So now we just wait for all the vampires to congregate. And then we do one more UV grenade. And that kills all them. The fun fact, if you don't actually hit that cutscene that I hit at the door, and you finish the level like that, where you kill them all, the, the game will just freeze. In that cutscene, it will just soft lock and freeze, and you have to restart the console. Very and that good. is the only time that this game 
ever freezes completely if you don't do something. It's very strange. But yeah. And now we can so got another escort level, but this one you can cheat I'm on. not too worried about this one. Uh, the difference is what so the with Whistler, you he you have to follow Whistler. But Dr. Grant, she follows you. So we can technically still get to the end of the level. And we're gonna do it a specific way. And we're gonna hope that the way we do it, Health she doesn't life. die. So if you go too far away from your AI companions, it will spawn vampires on them to stop you from, you know, leaving them. So it will spawn a bunch on them. So you've got to try and hit the end of the level before she dies. So I'm gonna try and quickly get out of bounds. Like so. Here we go. I'm just gonna run in this direction. As soon as I go, as soon as the screen goes black, I jump and hopefully don't get soft locked. Okay, good. You can despawn in that level plane too. Let me just turn around, shoot the switch, and then just try and run to the trigger before she dies. Help Very quickly. Blade. Let's drop him. Let's drop him. Help me blade. This is another point where I can get that audio bug as well. I'm hoping it doesn't happen. Please don't die. Okay. But you, you're fine once you hit that trigger, you've ended the level, but if she dies during that... Got it. Um, you lose audio. So now we've got the only boss fight. Horrible boss fight. I hate it. And I'm hoping I don't die. So we've got to destroy some pipes. Or we can't actually attack him yet. So we've got to just destroy these. Now you're meant to actually stab them normally. Like stand in front of them. He pierces his sword into it. And it takes a while. But if you just literally do it from behind. It, 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 the game just doesn't care. Do you want to get an early hit on him? There we go. So that's one hit. Comes so now down. for the rest of this level. I'm just going to stand by this door. And that's it. So he's going to do his little charge thing there. And what we're going to do is we're going to wait, jump forward. He's going to drop. We're going to hit. And then we're going to go back to the door and repeat that until he's dead. So for some reason, if you stand by this door, he just stays in that same place. Now, the reason this level's hard is not because of him. It's because of these vampires. So I've got to hope that I can do this. If, um, oh, God. No, 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 no. Oh, this is about this, about this, about this, about this. Okay, that's that's uh, so there is. Uh, that's what I wanted to tell you, Tom. There is another bug in this game. If you if you do a back backwards flip jump, mm -hmm. and then you start, you keep holding the button down to jump forward. He just keeps jumping backwards anyway. Oops. So that's what happened there. That just screwed me over because it happened then. The other thing that annoys me. So I'm just gonna is mash block and hope hope for the best. These uh, these one to one one on one kills, the, like the cinematic things that happen. Uh, they they really slow them down. They look really cool though, and we we spent a lot of time making them look very cool. But um, yeah, they do slow you down. So my health will slowly regenerate. Oh no, that that those two here. I'm gonna have to restart this level, I think. So the the the, the, the damage you take is completely random as well. You can take one punch and it does like a pixel of health and sometimes you can get hit and it takes like a massive chunk. I've only got two more hits left but I am probably going to die. Which is unlucky because of that one attack that he did because because of the backwards jumping bug. No! Yeah, normally you fight these guys. Is that only on the PS2 Yeah, I, I've stopped doing that on the Xbox version because I was dying a lot. Gotcha. But I need one more hit. I've just got to do one more hit and he's dead. It's a shame because it looks really pretty when you fight. Because you're actually doing hand to hand combat with their sword. It just looks cool. Isn't it? Okay. And all their, all their heads and limbs fall off. Oh, yeah. The reason I'm not doing it is because you know how, like, they infinitely keep spawning? Mm hmm. So they spawn next to him. Right. And I can either get that fancy kill animation. Right. Yeah. So right. I go to attack Whistler and I end up doing the. The glory kill animation on the vampire behind Whistler. Gotcha. Does that say Whistler? Yeah. I meant Vorpal. Vorpal, yeah. I do the kill on the vampire behind Vorpal. Canyon Hill. Or the vampire hits me as I'm trying to attack Vorpal and it cancels the, yeah, the attack. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I'm not do, killing them anymore because it's just really annoying. I've tried to deal with that as well. No, that's the guys in the space So now I'm on the last chapter. I don't know why they're wearing spacesuits, but it looks cool. So whatever. And this is the only level you'll see with the coat on in this chapter. We're just gonna we're gonna lose it in a second. 
And again, as usual, we're going to go out of bounds. So it's going to kill these enemies in here to get them out of my way. Come up here, do the side jumping glitch again to clip through this floor. I'm just going to quick turn and just jump in this direction until we reach the end. As is what happens in pretty much every point in this run. Yeah. Love it. Hopefully I've got the right angle. Yes, yeah, so, oh, that's perfect. Insider info, it looks cool. I do feel like I, I love this one. I think it's very interesting. And I know most people that I've spoke to really enjoy it. But there's a lot of just jumping out of bounds where you, where you don't really see much. But I still think it's cool. It is. There's a nice look into just the internals of a game. How, how badly it can go wrong. So now we've got the worst level in the game. All the stupid which... tricks we play which I can die right at the end of it. And if that happens, I'm going to lose like five minutes, which is not, not good. But hopefully it'll go well. So we're going to kill these uh, dudes with guns. I'm going to grab this ammo. I'm going to jump onto this windowsill. I'm just going to slowly tap backwards until we fall through the floor. Okay, it work. Kind of awkward to do it on Xbox for some reason. There we go. We can like clip our hitbox into it and then just drop out of bounds. I didn't even bother jumping that time. I'm just going to quick turn here. I'm Look, doing, I usually wouldn't set this up, but uh, for some reason, if you go too far left here, you will just despawn. Um, that's another spot. So I think we're past all the spots so we can despawn now. So we should be good for the rest of the run. See, this is the sort of quality you can expect from an 18 month game. Yeah, that's all the time we had, 18 months. Because when they signed it, they said, you have to ship the same day the film comes out. We're like, oh, uh, how far away is that? 18 months. Oh, shit. And we've never done a PS2 project. We've never done an Xbox project. And we had to do this game in yeah, 18 months. But we did it, you know. Um, unfortunately, with like, I want to say six months to go, they actually moved the film up because the film was already ready. So they just decided to move the film date up by like three months. And, and they said to us like, hey, so uh, uh, can you be ready three months early? We're like, you got some shit me. Of course we can't. <laughs> you want to, you know, with six months left on the schedule, you want us to halve the time? No, that'd be stupid. And that, you know, they got all moany and pissy and saying like, oh, but you said you'd ship the same day as the film. We said, no, we, we said we'd ship on this day. <laughs> Not my fault. Can you imagine if this game came film. out three months earlier than it already did? God. It would have been way more buggy. I mean, you didn't even have the, the final level done until like a no, month before. The final level, we, we we're a month before ship and the final level, this isn't the final level that you'll see the final level. Um, and it, we just didn't have anything. We had like a vague bit of geometry and some textures and some vague ideas. And the ideas were crap. Like we tried them and it just was no fun at all. And so, yeah, just blind panic. Like just do anything. And um, a guy called Mark Rose um, sort of pulled their nuts out the fire on that one. So uh, good job, Rosie. And, and we actually have a final level. It's not good, but it exists. So, good job. We're going to do that thing we did earlier again, where we're just going to put the canister down and pick it up from the other side. So in this level, you meant to blow up two of these energy receivers or whatever. Um, but thankfully, the last one will trigger on its own without the first one being blown up. So we can just skip the first one and go straight to the last one. So we're going to put that in that electric fence. When you blow up the first one, that electric fence will disappear. Um, and as usual, we're just going to go to the side. Now, here's a glitch you haven't seen yet. Remember I said you can trick the, the game into landing on a certain plane so you can click yeah. to the floor? Well, you can also do that to uh, to stand in the air as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. We're going to line ourselves up. This one's quite tricky. We're going to jump. And hopefully, if we do it right, the game will think we're going to land um, on the platform underneath us right here. But instead, we're going to land on the other side of the railing. And we should float in the air. It's really tricky to do though, because um, on, on you can do it differently on PS2 and it's a lot easier. But on Xbox, we can't do it the same way. Oh, 
There we go. So now we can float Magic. here and we just jump through this wall. No collision if you can like get a certain height to it. So we just jump through so it. Why would we put collision geometry that high up? <laughs> I mean, Blade can't jump that high, so. Not normally. We just jump through this wall here and now we're on the other side. There you go. Pick the canister up. So now there is something really Magic. scary that can happen right here. We can get stun locked. I'm hoping it doesn't happen. Please don't do it. I'm going to be very sad if they do. Eee! Okay. No! Okay. Ooh. Sometimes if you get hit there before you put the canister down, you just can't put it down and you, you're stuck. Yeah, and they, it's really annoying. They keep interrupting you as, as you're trying to put it down. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know how we let that bug get through. That's, I don't know. Anyway, these things happen. Oh, the, 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 these enemies are random here. Thankfully, they both yeah. decided to hide instead of shoot at me, which is good. I mean, the good thing about oh, having, a, having that wire. ship date is that when we shipped, um, you know, it wasn't a big prestigious game, but um, Activision, who published it, Madden they had a big marketing campaign set up for their lead game. And so they pre-bought all the like, you know, the like number one selling game, which is just lies. It's just, you know, they just buy those slots in, in stores. And, um, and then I forget which game it was, but uh, the, they'd set it all up for that game and that game didn't ship. They slipped. And so they're sitting there, they've got all this prepaid advertising and where the fanciest thing they've got. So we got all these, you know, number one best-selling game in like every game store throughout Europe was our little game was, was on these number one, it's complete lies, obviously, but they didn't have another game and they bought all this shelving space, you know, months ago. So we did really well out of all this advertising for our crappy little movie tie and it was brilliant. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. We've got two more levels left. This level, casually, if you play this game, if you've played this game, you'll remember this level. It is horrible. It is another escort level, but it's like half escort level, half not, and you have to do it all. And the escort section of it is really horrible because there's so many enemies and it's so hard to get through without the, the person dying. It's Dr. Grant again, if you're wondering. But in usual fashion, I'm not going to do that. Um, and the way we skip this level is just great, and I, I love it so much. It's a lot harder to do on Xbox, but I'm hope, hopeful that it will go well. So at the end of this level, there's an area with uh, a gate. And there's no way to get through the gate. Um, if you clip through the floor to try and jump past the gate, the actual plane where you can stand is way lower than the, the area where the trigger is itself. So the only physical way we could think to skip the level would be to actually clip through the gate itself. Um, and that was never really thought feasible. There was no way I'd do it. So one day I was messing around. I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's try some stuff. Um, so we'll come to the gate in a minute. So I was like, okay, I'll try some stuff. Maybe I can find something, probably not. Um, so I was messing around. So we're coming to this room here. So this is where you're meant to bring the doctor, Dr. Grant at the end of the level. She's meant to turn off this machine here. It opens the gate, which is at the back. I was like, okay, I wonder what I could do to get through this. I couldn't see a way, but then I just I just went up to it and, and jumped backwards through it. And you just go through it. It's just the it's most great. embarrassing bug. Because, like, I, I don't know how we missed that. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh. It, it, because I think there's collision, like there's like gaps in collision in, in between the bars, and you can just kind of jump through it at a specific angle. It's very weird. Why but now on the bottom level, this is terrible. Anyway, this is the. Uh, oh, you can the, like, jump through it forwards as well, but it's it's a lot harder. I so. you. Do we have any time for any donations during this level? Uh, we have plenty we in a minute. There'll be like yep. three minutes of waiting. All right. He's he's got to stick his sword into the orifices first. Yeah. <laughs> So basically what we're doing right now is we're doing this, but then we're going to get Whistler to spawn and he's going to come around, he's going to plant some bombs. And we're going to do something pretty funny while he's planting those bombs and that's the, the perfect time when you can uh, read yep. a load of yep. donations. So we're just going to come over here, start this last one, Whistler's going to come in, he's like, hey guys, I'm here, let's go. Here he is. And then while Whistler's planting these bombs, the vampires don't seem to worry him. They just leave him alone. They just the want to beat us up. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're, we're just gonna we're just gonna come over here. I'm gonna drop on this ledge. Artificial intelligence, you know. I'm just gonna stand here for the rest of the level, and they can't hit us. So. One thing I do want to mention quickly, I've got to wait a second, so I'm doing a buffer here, I'm walking into the corner. Sometimes they can drop on my head and clip me out of bounds, so I'm just kind of waiting a sec to settle it down. Um, so that should be fine now. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to hump the wall a little bit, as you do. And I'm going to turn around and as you can see, the wall is watching me. They're just in awe of, awe of Blade. Anyway, the floor, so now I'm just going to stand here for three minutes. And you, and you can see Whistler wandering along there and they just leave him yeah, alone. Yeah, you'll see Whistler just walking around. This is high quality software, <laughs> folks. <laughs> all right, I have some donations. I have all kinds of donations. I have all kinds of cute donations What's about cute kitties. Oh, Ziegler sent in $50, said kittens are needed to save us all. We have an anonymous donation for $25. Says, let's go cute kittens. We have a donation from kittens. All caps for $10. Says, we need the kittos. Give kittos less than three. We have a $200 donation from Zero Thought that says cute kitten noises. And another $200 donation from Valdez that just says kitty. We did get those kitties for all of you lovely, lovely donors. Thank you so, so much. I also have a donation here from Eccentric J for $25, who says, had no idea they even made a Blade game. Why do some vampires try to always ice skate uphill? There's actually two Blade games. One based on the first film as well on PS1, So, but don't play that one. It's pretty bad. <laughs> one more to go. It's, 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 I've, I, it's, it's not good. Look at this excellent Whistler's game. Fell in the oh, he's fell in what? the water. Oh my god. What? Quality software. What is going on? Oh. I've never seen this before. He's stuck. No. Oh. Wait. Let me see. I'll push him. I'm going to try and push him there. Oh no. I've never seen this happen. How does that happen? Oh, he's up. He's up. Oh, he, he made oh, it. He's right, going. Okay. He's going. Oh, oh no, he's shooting them all now. Stop it, Whistler. What? He's going to die. What is he doing? Why is he fighting them? Oh, he's fighting. He started. Uh, he's stuck. I think his AI is broken. Oh no, he's going. He's going. He's going. Stop shooting them. I'm scared now. I don't know what's going on. Is he? Where is he? This is I what happens see, when. I can't. You. Where's he going? Oh. Wait. No, no. Third, third middle one. Yeah, he's good. All right. Yeah, but why was he coming back up this way then? He always does the left, the right, and then the middle, doesn't he? Yeah, but he, okay, so he went to the right, he fell in the water, and then he was trying to come back up onto this this side instead of going to the middle. I'm so confused. I, why are you asking me? I only wrote the game. I, okay, <sighs> but anyway, we're nearly at the end. I had a heart attack, it's fine. Quality! So, the reason we can't skip this level is because Whistler needs to be in a certain position for the end double to trigger. So, we have to let him do his bombs. I'm going to let him walk past. Hopefully, he doesn't get stuck again. Oh, he's gaming. He's going. Right, okay. Right, so I'm going to turn around. I'm going to jump back down here. I'm just going to run to the end. Get ready on time. As soon as the cutscene starts. Load bearing boss. Get your ass Place moving. is going to go blue. Got all day. Load bearing boss. And... Uh, come on. Time. I thought it wasn't going to trigger them. I need a heart attack. It's because people are watching. Picking yes, you around. You just have to wait for him to walk. I thought he'd like, his AI was broken or something because of him falling in the water. I don't know. That was late too. I've watched you run that so many times, I've never seen that happen. Listen, no. Isn't it wonderful? And here's Tom's name. Yay! Hey, Tom and all the other right superstars. Hooray! Oh, man. That was scary. I've never seen that. I mean, it's Good it's in the shitty queue. Something's got to happen I've never seen before. Yep, there you I've go. I've been playing this game since I was a kid. I've been running it for seven years, and I've never seen that happen. So, okay. Thanks, thanks for doing that for GDQ. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks, thanks for letting me show it at a mainline GDQ, and it's amazing. It's, it's, it's a great speed run. Um, I do have a full tutorial for this game. It's for the PS2 version, but they're pretty much the same. If you can put it on emulator, it's faster anyway. But the PS2 version is what the tutorial is for. Um, and yeah, it's it's a really good speed run. Um, I've routed and done everything in this game all by myself. 
Um, I, I think there's maybe one trick that was found by someone else, but everything in this game has been found by me over the years, and I'm very proud of what I've turned this game into, an absolute monstrosity of a speedrun. It's great. Oh uh, Yeah, I, um, I, I think it's fantastic. This this old game that we sort of pushed out, and you've... you've it's just entertainment now. It's, it's just way, way more fun watching you break it. This game is a lot better as a speedrun than it is as a game. Uh, yeah, it is, it is. You could say. Um, this game casually is very, very, very difficult to even beat. So, just to be able to fly through it in, in you know, 45, 50 minutes is is great. Um, and no, no, not many hiccups. So it's, it, it, I think it went pretty well, especially for the Xbox version. This is the first time I've done an Xbox version at a marathon. So I'm happy it went well. Um, and yeah, that, that was Blade Two. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, do you have any final words? No, thanks for that. Thanks for appreciating this old piece of junk we wrote. <laughs> oh my gosh. Y'all are amazing. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that run of Blade 2 as much as I did. Don't go anywhere, friends. Coming right up, Recold is going to be playing Goat Simulator for you. We're going to see all those cute kittens y'all donated for. And in fact, we have another bid war open. Well, another bid war. You have a bid war open for that as well for the end of that run in Goat Simulator to save or mock the humans. Now, mocking them has a healthy, healthy lead at $2,570. If you feel, I don't know, like a little bit of uh, a little bit of compassion for those humans, you want to save them instead, well, you have a ways to go with your donations. It is at $270. But uh, that is definitely something that you can donate towards when you are getting your donations in for the Prevent Cancer Foundation, which is why we are all here right now. Speaking of donations, I have one here from Lucy2005 for $25, who says, great runs, great commentary, great hosting, keep it up. Well, we will, we just need to take a little break and then we will be right back with Goats and Kitties.
What's up, my friends? I hope y'all have been enjoying Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online just as much as I have. I just want to drop a little reminder what we're all here playing games really quickly for. It's the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Founded in 1985, it is a U.S.-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. Their vision is to stop cancer before it starts. You can find out more information about PCF at preventcancer.org. And I am just so incredibly honored to be able to be here helping to raise funds for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. This cause um, is near and dear to my heart. I lost a really, really beloved aunt um, not too long before the very first time that I volunteered. And if they had been able to detect her cancer earlier, she might have still been here. So i um, incredibly honored to be able to help others uh, maybe not have to lose their loved ones to cancer through the generosity of all of you um, donating to this wonderful event. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your donations. Donations like this one from Boboblio for $25 that says legendary Blade 2 commentary. Could not agree more. I have a dono here for $50 from Sunrise who says cats, 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 Castlevania. And they are most likely referencing the Castlevania Harmony of Despair game that we have coming up pretty soon. By the way, we do have a Zip Glitch Showcase incentive for that open that we're looking to meet. Sitting at five thousand, or sorry, sitting at two thousand one hundred forty-one dollars and forty-seven cents. Looking for five thousand dollars to unlock that when you're getting your donations in. Don't forget to click on those incentives. And now it is the moment y'all have been waiting for. Recult is going to bring you Goat Simulator All Trophies Base Game.